This is part four of four of the second set of IB multiple choice questions that I'm answering for you. Um, if you want to check out the unanswered questions, there's a link in the description at the bottom. And if you want to check out the other videos, there's a link to the playlist in the description at the bottom as well. Question 31. The graph shows how the force F applied to an object varies with time T. Okay, so we've got a force time, time graph and we want the momentum gained by the object from T0 to T10. So T0 is here, T10. So the momentum gained by the object through the entire graph. Well, we know that the change in momentum is Ft, and we also know that if we need to multiply the two axes together, what we need to do to find the total is find the area under the graph. So you can divide this into some shapes. If you divide this into, let's make it a bit more clear. There we go. If we divide this into two shapes, we've got this one here, which is a height of six and a width of six as well. So the area of that is six times six divided by two. And the area of this one is 10 times four. So we've got total area equals total change in momentum, uh, which equals uh, 18 plus 40 which is 58, and so we've got an answer of D. Okay, question 32. Three identical capacitors, each of capacitance C are connected as shown. The total capacitance, okay, this is uh, very similar to a, what they, you would usually see a resistance question like this, but remember the equations for capacitance are the opposite way around to the equations for resistance. So in series, we've got 1 over C plus 1 over C equals 1 over C total. And then we get, uh, so that's 2 over C equals C total. So C total, uh, sorry, equals 1 over C total. So C total is C over 2. So the total capacitance of this top row is C over 2. Uh, and then we've got them in parallel. So if we just add C over 2 to C, so C over 2 plus C equals 302C, so the answer must be C. Question 33. Uh, here's a simple motor, but there's no commutator or anything, so what's going to happen to the coil once it starts spinning? Well, once it starts spinning, if we've got the, the positive side here and the negative side here, we can use Fleming's left-hand rule to determine the nature of the force. So we've got first finger field. So the field is going from north to south. Second finger current. Current goes from positive to negative, so that's going into the page. So first finger field, second finger current. So the force of this side is going to be going downwards. And the force on this side is going to be going upwards. Now, normally in an electric motor, once this side got to the top and once this side got to the bottom, the polarity of the current would change. But in this case, they've forgotten to include that piece of equipment. So what's going to happen is the force on this side of the wire is going to stay in the downwards direction. Force on this side of the wire is going to stay in the upwards direction. So it's just going to move to the top. And this one's just going to move to the bottom. So you're just going to end up with the coil being arranged like that and so it's going to move a quarter of a revolution and then just stop moving so c question 34 a positively charged particle is projected into a uniform electric field which diagram represents the path of the particle in the electric field okay so first of all it's an electric field so you don't need to worry about left hand or right hand rule because we've got an electric charge in an electric field. So it's not going to start moving in a circle. If it was a magnetic field, then the shape would look like one of these two. But it's an electric field, so it's going to look like one of these two. Then you just need to remember which direction the electric field lines point. So they're both pointing downwards. Remember, they go from positive to negative. The proton here or positively charged particle, whatever it is, is going to be repelled from the positive, so, and attracted to the negative, so the answer is A. 35. This is a transformer. The key thing about this question is this is a 20 volt battery. Okay, a battery is DC, and it is not 
changing that in that potential difference at the beginning in that first coil is not changing remember in order to induce an emf you need a change in flux linkage linkage over uh, over time and in this case there is no change in flux linkage because this coil is experiencing a constant voltage so there is no change in flux linkage in the second coil and so therefore the EMF induced is going to be zero because it's a battery. If this was an AC input, then it would be different, but it's not. It's a battery, so the answer is zero. The magnitude of the uncertainty in the position of a particle is equal to the de Broglie wavelength of the particle. Which of the following is the minimum uncertainty in the momentum of the particle? Okay, so we've got the uncertainty in position is equal to lambda. And we also need to remember that lambda is h over p. Uh, we want the minimum uncertainty in the momentum. So the thing that links that is delta x delta p equals uh, is greater than or equal to uh, h over 4 pi. So uh, all we need to do is do a little bit of uh, shifting around. So uh, h equals lambda p. So delta x delta p. Uh, it's greater than or equal to lambda p over 4 pi. Uh, and it says up here that delta x is lambda. So lambda delta p is greater than or equal to lambda p over 4 pi. The wavelengths can cancel. Let's do that in a different color. The wavelengths can cancel. And so what we're trying to find, we're trying to find the minimum uncertainty in the momentum p. So we're trying to find delta p. So the answer is p over 4 pi. A. Question 37. The diagram shows the lowest energy levels for a certain atom. A photon with 3.2 electron volts is absorbed. An electron could move from... Okay, well, this is just a case of seeing which patterns fit, fit where. So if it's absorbed, it's going from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. So we need to just figure out what that difference is. And it looks like 3.2 electron volts. If we add 3.2 electron volts to minus 5.5, we get minus 2.3. So it looks like it's jumping from the ground state to uh, level two there. So ground state to level two is B. Which unit is equivalent to a Coulomb? Okay, well, one Coulomb uh, is the unit of charge. So charge equals IT, uh, current is in amps, time is in seconds, so amp seconds would be correct. Question 39. A mass attached to a string rotates in a gravitational field with constant period in a vertical plane. How do the tension in the string and the kinetic energy of the mass compare at P and Q? Okay, so the tension in the string, um, the tension in the string at Q has to balance the weight of the force and it has to provide the centripetal force. And so the tension in the string must be highest at Q because at P, all it has to do is provide the centripetal force and it doesn't have to balance the weight. So the tension in the string must be greater at Q than at P. So it's not A and it's not C. The kinetic energy of the mass, we can think about that in terms of energy conservation. So if we if we imagine for, for uh, P through Q to this point, we can think about it almost like a pendulum. So at P, the potential energy, uh, EP, sorry, um, is greater. That potential energy converts into kinetic energy at the bottom. And so the kinetic energy is going to be higher at Q because some of that potential energy is converted into uh, kinetic energy at Q. So the kinetic energy of the mass is going to be higher at Q than at P. So the answer is B. Question 40. The graph relates to the motion of a falling body, which is a correct description of the graph. Um, so if we're trying to figure out what, uh, what is Y, is it speed time or is it distance time graph? Um, and also whether air resistance is negligible. Well, um, the motion of a falling body here 
whatever Y is, um, whatever change in Y over change in time is, is at its greatest. So if this was a distance time graph, then the gradient of that graph would be speed. Now it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be slowing down. If that was a if that was a speed if that was a distance time graph and the gradient was speed, then this object that was falling would be slowing down. So that's not going to be the case for a falling body. A falling body is going to speed up. So I'd say it's not a distance time graph. It's a speed time graph because then the gradient is acceleration and the acceleration is decreasing in this case. So if the acceleration is decreasing, then that must mean there is some air resistance acting on the body. So as it gets faster, the acceleration gets lower. If there was no air resistance, it would just be a straight line. So Y is speed and air resistance is not negligible, 40D. This was the final um, video for the second multiple choice paper that I've done. Uh, if you want to check out the unanswered questions, they're in the link below. And if you want to check out the uh, the other three videos for this series, they are also in the link is also in the description below. Thanks very much for watching. Just as a little end note for this question, which is question 39, there is some debate about uh, about which whether the answer should be B or D here because of the words constant period here. Um, if you remember that V equals omega R and that uh, omega equals 2 pi over T, then um, what that means is that if the, con if the period is constant, then the uh, then the velocity must be constant as well because the, uh, the the radius is staying the same because it's moving in a circle. So uh, if the velocity is constant and the mass is constant, then the kinetic energy could, should be the same. So that would indicate that the answer is D. However, you also need to satisfy the conservation of energy principles, which we discussed before, uh, in which case that the uh, potential energy of the gravitational potential energy of P at P is definitely decreasing by the time it goes to Q. And uh, if the potential energy is decreasing, then it must be being converted into kinetic energy because there's nowhere else for it to go. So that would mean that the kinetic energy should be greater at Q. So we've got kind of conflicting uh, possibilities here. Uh, I'm very interested to hear what you would think about the answer to this question. Do you think it's B or do you think it's D? Please leave your comments in the, uh, in the comments section below. Thanks very much.